And then I got offered it. And I remember the producer calling me, and I, I sort of had some mates around for dinner. And I said, look, I can't really talk now, having got people for dinner. And he said, I have to say, this isn't quite the reaction I was expecting. I thought you might be a bit more excited. I went, yeah, no, I am, I'm just very busy. And I was like, oh, do I don't want to do a series? Anyway, of course, I did. And um, yeah, it was, it was life-changing. You know, I had, none of us had any idea how big it was going to be and how popular it was going to be. I mean, we just didn't even think about that. You're going to meet me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you had an interesting way to the role, didn't you? To where? To Dempsey, because they weren't really looking for your type at all. Well, that's right. I, I was given a... Um, a stack of pilot scripts, you know, that's potential series. And I read them, and the only one I liked was the one on funny paper. I was in America at the time. So A4 was a kind of skinnier, longer page. And uh, I said, okay, I like this one. Oh, that was a mistake. We shouldn't have sent it to you. You're not right for the part. And I said, I know, I agree, I'm not right for the way it's written. However, I have an idea. So, they were a powerful agency. They got me a, a meeting, and um, I went in, and obviously it was a favor because these guys were packing the suitcases while I was standing there. And I said, look, I know I'm not right for what you're looking for, um, like a California millionaire type, whatever I said, but if you are interested in making this a more gritty, you know, guy from the street, New York, homicide detective, I'm your man. Then there'd be dynamics. And um, thank you for coming. I went back to my office and I got a call the afternoon. My agent said, they're coming back from the airport. They want to put that on tape. And the rest is history. So when did you two first meet and start acting together? Like, was it? Soon when, when the filming started, or was it like a table read through? And, you know, what, what was that I think like? we first met in the Ritz Hotel. Mm -hmm. the, the producer thought it would be nice and sort of uh, dignified if we were introduced in a nice place. And um, yeah, that didn't go so well <laughs> because I'd never met Michael before, obviously, and so I didn't know what he was like. And he was, what I later found out, he was practicing for the role. So he was being quite loud and obnoxious, and um, I, was, I was absolutely horrified by him. I was actually walking around, I bought a toy gun, uh, strap on thing here, I was walking around town with attitude, 
and uh, said in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I was I sat down. The phone was ringing in the uh, Ritz tea room, but nobody picked it up. And finally, we're trying to have a conversation. I said, "Is somebody going to answer that?" And the look on Glynis's face. <laughs> What have I done? What am I going to be working with? You know, and it was just, it was my character, you know, just experimenting with um, he, his sense of, what was the word? Uh, it, was in, in a, it was not inappropriate, it was just... Okay, it was inappropriate. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, after that, because I've never been to America, I didn't even know that many Americans other than from the movies. And I had a boyfriend, and I went home, and I said, he is an American nightmare. <laughs> I said, he's everything I dreamed that an American would be, and I don't know how I'm going to get through this. So, yeah, that was our, that was our introduction. Yeah, and then it just went on from there, really. So what was your opinion of Glennis that first time? I thought she was cute. <laughs> I thought, wow, you know, and then I had to remember, wait a second, you know, we're working together here, got to maintain a professional relationship, so I asked her out immediately. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was great because I, I was responding not only as myself, but as my character, you know, um, you know and, and then the character kind of like, question her abilities, um, her species, you know, things like that were of the day. Um, but as far as... Uh, the 1980s, ladies, <laughs> so you can only imagine. Because yeah. it's so different now. <laughs> mm. Not as different as I like it to be. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, it was, uh, yeah, it was challenging. Can you, can you imagine Dempsey having to go to anger management? <laughs> I mean, or, you know, being taught, uh, you know, feminist, you know, proper rules, and, you know, it, it just uh, didn't work that way. He was irreverent. He was immune to those kinds of things and made up the wall in his mind of what was right. You know? And that was in the 1980s. That's right. So when he would be in jail today. <laughs> and I guess, like, a kind of strong female lead. You had Julia Bravo, you had the gentle touch, so it kind of, they, they were kind of coming around, weren't they, around that time, but it was all very police space. Yeah, because if you look at that wonderful series, Life on Mars, which was the 1970s, um, so we've moved on a tad since then, um, but yeah, it was, I mean, you know, just, um, so my experience, um, you know, obviously, we were involved in a lot of meetings, production meetings and stuff, and I literally was the only woman in the room. And it was hard to be heard. And I think, so I think the whole dynamic of, of having, you know, we did have a, cult, a real cultural thing, you know, because he was American and, and I was English, and uh, so that was real, you know, you know, we put that on screen, that was real. And, um, and then the whole male-female thing, um, which I've always found quite difficult anyway, and, and I've never been in a position where I was you know, a big lead in a series where I had any power at all, but it was really, because it was the 1980s, it was really only an illusion of power, you know, as a woman, it was, it, it was a hard time to navigate through it. So, all those elements that, and then of course, you know, that sort of obviously there was a chemistry, you know, of, you know, I, ooh, and, and you know, you, you know so all that was there. And I think, I think what happened with Dempsey and Makepeace with our relationship on screen, it was like the perfect storm because all those elements that were real, um, you know, came out on screen. And they, they were real, you know, they, they was antagonism, there was attraction, there was a culture difference, um, there was the male-female issue. Um, so Venice was a hero of her time. She was a feminist before it was, you know, um, time to be a feminist. She was a, the mold 
and she defended herself in a very misogynist environment, which was uh, all run by men and uh, written by men. And there were times we actually would just switch the dialogue, you know, to make it more interesting and more fun to play um, and make uh, make these more of a power uh, force in the story, you know, so it wasn't like me just always saving make these, you know, she saved me and uh, we took them on equally. And, uh, yeah, that was the thing. I mean, so it, it, it's funny because when you look at the writing, you would think, oh my, you know, they, they wrote it and molded it for us. But that isn't actually what happened. Um, you know, maybe the first episode, and some of the episodes, and we had a whole bunch of different writers, and, uh, you know, there was Ronald Graham, who was like our favorite writer, and he also produced the, the final series. However, a lot of the scripts we were given had been pre-written for other series. So we were given um, scripts that had been rejected for the Sweeney, like 10 years before, or the professionals, that were written for two guys. And they certainly were not molded to us or our characters. So we would look at them and we would think, why aren't they writing? Why isn't someone writing for us? They can see what's happening on screen. They can see I'm a woman. He's a man. He's American. You know, why aren't they? They, they would make a few little changes so that it wasn't the Sweeney, it was Dempsey and Makepeace. But for us, it, it just, it didn't quite fit the mold. So, so the, um, work, the work was more we did a lot of making work on the work script. work. We had to mold it, change it, and make it happen in real for us. And that was hard work, but paid off in the end because uh, it became what it became, which was an iconic show. So do you know if the, the whole kind of will they weren't making was there from the start? Was that based on kind of you two, really, rather than the characters? I think that is, I do actually think that was the one thing they had put in because of course if you've got a series of two cops working together and they do actually get involved, I mean where does that lead to? So, and I, I think possibly when they saw us together, that, you know, they had the idea to do that, but I think, it, you know, as much as everybody wanted them to get together, if you had put them together, kind of been the end of the series, wouldn't it? So you, you had to keep that going, really. Yeah, it would very much change the storylines and everything, wouldn't it? Two yeah. different characters, almost. Yes. I'm sure you guys must have questions and bored of listening to me, so if you've got questions, stick your hand in the air. There's one right at the very back, there's one at the front, so grab somebody. Yeah. So it's probably to right now. Hi Michael, hi Glynis, lovely to see you guys. Um, I've got a couple of questions actually, so I'm going to be greedy. One's from actually my son who wasn't able to come, and um, the second one is from me. Um, Michael, because obviously you were in um, the Marvel Universe in the first Captain America movie, had you actually thought of maybe branching out and going for any more roles if they were offered to you? I have a hard time connecting with the place. I think the lady was asking, you did Captain America. Did, yes. And um, and so would you be open to do more roles of that ill? If, if, you, know, you know, the Captain America role. And I think this is her son asking this. Yes, it would is. you be interested in doing more roles like that? Absolutely. That was that was incredible fun working with great people. Um, it was the first Marvel, I think, the, uh, the first Avenger. Um, and, yeah, I would like to do more. I mean, at the time, the family of Marvel was building, and I, I think it's time the family called. <laughs> Thank you. Second question. Uh, this is actually to do with Dancy and Makepeace, because I had such a girl crush on you growing up in the 80s, Michael. Uh, do you think there was a reason there were only 30 episodes ever made 
um, would you have liked to have been more episodes? What did you say? That the that he directed an episode? Is that what you said? No, no. Because there were only, I think, 30 episodes ever made. Right. Do you wish that there had been more oh, episodes? Right. You're saying because, you know, only 30 episodes were made, so do we wish there were more? Yeah, I wish there was about another three years of it. It would have been, a series like that in America would have run on for another two or three years easily. Easily. There were 20 million viewers when they canceled that show. That's an unheard of in America, especially now. It's hard to get 20 million views. Um, but that's, it was a different time. And also it was a half an independent production. So that was something new and uh, things wanted to stay in the house here. So they moved on to like London's burning. But I mean, the, the, the partner, so it was an American English uh, co production, and a, a Tribune Entertainment was the American half. And they were ready to go, they wanted us to sign for 85 more episodes. Yeah, and um, the in inconceivable this would happen this day. I think they weren't expecting, it was LWT. I don't think they were expecting Dempsey Makers to be that big. And I think it was almost annoying to them. And they had to create an export department to handle the desire for the show in 75 other countries. Um, so, there were demands made upon them that were unusual. They did not handle it. Uh, it was, it had a life of its own. And that's why Germany and Holland and France and Spain all came wanting to be part of a new production. It could have been an, an, an unbelievable international production, which would have been magical. But it, th that was later at that time, as I said, Tribune Entertainment wanted to make more, a lot more, because they were thrilled with the result. Um, but LWT half-heartedly began to negotiate with us. And um, they actually started with Michael, who of course had his LA agent and LA lawyer. And they took one half-hearted meeting in LA, and then the moment his agent or lawyer said anything, it was, you know, this is what we need, they just went, oh, yeah, forget it. They literally went, forget it. And they couldn't be bothered. I think they thought, ah, oh, you know, they'll get too big for their mood, you know, what are we gonna do with this? And it was like a hassle to them. I mean, in this day and age, any production company or TV channel would kill for ratings like that. But in those days, it was like, you know what, this is too much of a bother. And, and they just pulled it. They didn't even get as far as coming to me. And I remember the head of Tribune Entertainment calling us and saying, what is happening? Please tell me this, this is not happening. I don't understand what's happening. And they couldn't make head or tail. It, it was very odd. And so that's what happened. I mean, you know, Michael was definitely up for more. I think I would have thought about it being me. Um, but, you know, we would have done more. So it is absolutely amazing. The elder more we got to our crew after three years. Uh, you know, some had babies, some passed away. It was, uh, we were a family. And it would have been so wonderful to carry on to make more years of the show because it was, um, it was it was easy to go, and the Americans were willing to pay the full price, the full cost of the show, and still LWT passed. I mean, who knows what the real reason is? And then they they um, they start repeating it also half-heartedly in the years that followed, when it was still very popular in England, and then they sort of gave that up. And as I'm sure you all know, the years and years. They never repeated it. It was almost a, like they didn't know how to deal with such commerciality, such success, because we we never uh, went to any of the award shows. 
Actually, I was visiting my folks in Florida on way from Los Angeles, Florida, on my way to England, and my agent called and said there's a delay because Glynis was doing Jane, so stay where you are for another week or so. I said, I'm with my parents. <laughs> so I said, it's not gonna happen. So I, I came early to England and uh, found a place to live. So just, just before we, we finish up then, um, what are you working on at the moment, if anything, or are you just about active in the countryside? Well, I'm in Hollyoaks. I've been in Hollyoaks for the last year. <laughs> and, um, and I'll definitely be there another year. Um, so, yeah, it was great because, it, you know, we'd just been through the pandemic, you know, which was a terrible time for actors, obviously. And you think, yeah, but, yeah will I ever work again? And, um, and then at the beginning of last year, I just got a call from Holly Oaks. And it's not a show I thought I would ever go into. But they offered me a great part playing a gangster. And, I mean, I could never risk you know, resist a gangster, can you? So, uh, yeah, you know, I went to Hollyoaks, and then I was, I, I'm such an awful character, you know, the undertaker, kills people, not very nice. I mean, you know, Dempsey and Peace would shoot her. <laughs> but, um, it was great fun, and I, you know, I think I was meant to die. And then they thought, oh, do you know what, I think we might keep you. So anyway, so I've ended up staying a bit longer. Yeah. I just finished uh, filming a thing called Canary Black. Um, Kate Beckinsall, uh, I think, is starring in it. Um, it was directed by Renee, I uh, can't remember his last name, directed Taken. It's amazing. Um, and that was good fun. I was playing the uh, American president. Um, and I'm um, still working on my book, finding a publisher, and um, well, there's other projects that I can't talk about. Yeah, of course, yeah. So is that a, an autobiography or a, a, just a, a what you say, work on your book? Autobiography? Yeah. It's a biography called yeah. Too Much to Tell. And um, we just need the right publisher right now. And that's it. Do you get to edit that as you go through? Go, you're not having that or that or that? No, I haven't read it actually. Oh, right. Okay. I thought it might be best not to. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Mind you, I, I, do, I have said I want a copy of all mentions of me, and if I'm not happy, I will sue. <laughs> my my alternative title joking. was Not joking. When my wife reads this, I'll be divorced. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for Michael McClay's. <laughs>